Welcome to Retro Bassin. Today I'm going to show you the top 10 old lures that I wish they'd never discontinued. If this is your first time here at Retro Bassin and you like to fish it old school, I'm talking vintage rods, reels, lures, equipment, and even electronics. Consider subscribing and hit that bell icon so you don't miss anything. Now let's get on to our list. Based out of Akron, Ohio, Fred Arbogast is one of my favorite all-time lure producers. They had so many crazy baits in the day. Of course, we talk about the jitterbug, the hula popper, the Hawaiian wigglers, and more. But without a doubt, my favorite line from Fred was this. The Seans Believin'. This was a line of ultra realistic finishes that went over a number of baits, including the hula popper, the jitterbug, and even the mud bug. For those who know, these baits are really, really hard to find, but they're uber cool. This one, I'll show you this pattern. This is a chipmunk version of the hula popper. Look at that awesome color scheme. As far as the top waters go, there were a couple of different varieties. Chipmunk, we had mouse, we have a red wing blackbird, and also sparrow. Uh, the four of those are just awesome and really remind you of some of the more realistic baits that we see today. Here's a Seans Believing version of the Fred Arborgast mud bug, and this is in a bait fish bass pattern. Look how awesome that thing is. You can still get a couple of the Fred Arbogast baits today from Lornet, but long gone are the Seans Believe in line. Maybe it's time they bring them back. The inventor of the next bait on this list caught over 800 10 pound bass. Of course, I'm talking about none other than the bass professor, the late great Mr. Doug Hannon. Over his career, Doug had a ton of pretty big contributions to the sport of bass fishing, one of which was the Northwest Factor, which was a theory that said the northwest corner of a lake would actually be the first to warm up in the spring and thus draw the most fish. Another contribution that Doug had, the moon clock. Doug was one of the first anglers to really dial in the moon and how it affected bass behavior. These clocks are actually still sold today and I buy one every year. In the late 70s and 80s, Doug had a number of pretty cool products he released with the help of Burke Lures. But by far my favorite was this thing, the Doug Hannon snake bait. Here's this bait, and it's actually a pretty ingenious design. What it is, it's a foam head with a through hole, sort of like a slip sinker that floats. Comes with a hook and a more of an eel slash snake shaped worm. You rig the worm up on the hook, then you slide this onto the hook, sort of like you would a slip sinker. This bait actually floats on the surface and because of this head, it actually tracks very straight and slides right over the top of any kind of lily pads or eelgrass that you have. Awesome discontinued bait from Burke Lures. I don't know how much they're doing these days, but boy, if they ever came out with the Doug Hannon snake bait again, it'd be awesome. When we think of the catches that really shape our love for the sport, it's not necessarily the biggest fish you caught, but those first fish that we ever saw. For me, I remember the first ever largemouth bass that I ever had strike a lure. And that lure was the Strike King Grass Frog. Long before the frog craze took over, Strike King and Bill Dance introduced this, the Hydrofoam Grass Frog. It was a pretty cool debate that Bill had a huge role in designing. It is a hydrofoam body with a wedge-shaped head. It's got a slight weighted internal structure here comes with a single hook and a trailer. 
and a pair of kicking legs. That first ever bass that I ever saw strike a lure came out from underneath a grass mat, grabbed this bait, went down about four feet and decided to shake the heck out of it. I was so shocked, I couldn't even set the hook. I just watched this fish shake it. Eventually he lost interest and let go. That fish I never hooked, but that moment, that fish absolutely hooked me on the sport of bass fishing. So for that, I've got a special fondness for this bait, which is no longer in production. Strike King, I know they've got a ton of new baits out these days, and this probably is not very high up on the radar, but if they ever reintroduce the grass frog, man, <laughs> all sun. His name was Bad Bad Leroy Brown, and he was the pet bass for none other than Tom Mann. Tom had a number of astounding inventions, and actually he's got two on this list. But one lure that I really wish, and I've been begging man to reintroduce, was this, the Leroy Brown lipless crankbait. It's a quarter ounce crankbait that fishes similar to a quarter ounce rattle trap, but it's got the profile of something you'd almost see out of live target. The detail is pretty awesome, and even the fin shape is realistic. According to Tom, this lure was actually designed after his pet bass, which was the most famous bass in perhaps all of history. I'll drop a link down below to the full episode of Leroy Brown that I did a few months ago. But in the meantime, this is still a bait that I really wish man would reintroduce. The original, the bad, bad Leroy Brown. The next bait comes to us from Tyler, Texas. Of course, it is still home today of Cream Lures, the company originally started by Nick and Cosima Cream. The lure that I've always wished Cream would come back out with was this, the Tube Worm. Night Lures is actually the company that ultimately would go on to purchase Cream Lures, and this bait would fall under the Cream banner. What's so cool about the tube worm is that it was a Ned Rig decades before there were Ned Rigs. I'll show you how this thing works. The bait itself is basically a five inch worm style bait. The first two inches are a solid head. The rest of the body down to a skirt is hollow. The net effect of this bait is that when you place it in the water, it will actually sit upright with the tentacles straight up and down. Again, a whole lot like a Ned Rig. I've been trying to scoop these up wherever I can find them online, and I've really wanted for a long time for Cream to reintroduce this awesome bait. The good news for me is that I actually just found out that this very year, Cream is in fact reintroducing the Tube Worm. So definitely check that one out. Who can name this bait? This is the classic from Bass Pro Shops and Shoestring, the amazing lore inventor for Bass Pro back in the day. This is called the Tornado. I think there's a song that goes, you don't know what you got till it's gone. And that is definitely the case with me and this bait. I used to go to Bass Pro all the time. I, yes, I fish with this, but you would see hundreds of them on the shelf and you had no worries. I could always go get more. Well, that changed when Bass Pro Shops discontinued the Tornado line. Here's a 1988 Bass Pro Shops catalog. I will show you this. This is the one page spread for the Tornado Spinnerbait and the inventor Shoestring Du Boy. I think I said that right. It is a pretty unique bait. It had a couple of interesting things about this bait. Number one, it had a flat head. So it actually would ride up a little bit higher than most spinnerbaits. Two, it had a blade that was a unique shape. I actually was just fishing with this thing this week. What's pretty cool about the Tornado is it can actually act like a spinnerbait or a buzzbait depending upon rod angle and retrieval speed. And last but not least, it had a very interesting eyelet here where you could run a rubber band and make this bait weedless. So Mr. Johnny Morris, if you're listening, I know you are doing a ton of cool stuff at the Bass Pro Shops in Springfield, Missouri including your museum dedicated to Brown's Derby. 
So as a tribute to the golden era of Bass Pro Shops and that most famous of lore inventors, Shoestring, Mr. Morris, I think it's time to reintroduce the Tornado. I remember the shock and panic the first time I went to Bass Pro Shops and realized that this next product was no longer available. This product was actually formed as a result of a live frog shortage on a little lake in Wisconsin back in the year 1921. There, there were two fishing buddies who actually liked to target black bass with live frogs. Well, that year, live frogs were hard to come by. And the two buddies set out to develop an alternative. After a year of testing, they came up with a pork alternative to that live frog and founded a company by the name of Uncle Josh. It's kind of amazing if you think about it, but this company was around for 93 years until they stopped making pork rinds in 2015. The reason, according to Uncle Josh, was that most of the pigs that they had traditionally harvested were about two to three years old. And now, most pigs are harvested at six months, which means that that rind on the pork is no longer conducive for making pork rind baits. It was a total shock when I did a little bit of research when I got back from Bass Pro Shops that day and realized that pork rinds were no longer available. After that news, I went on a bit of a hoarding spree. I hit every local tackle shop I could, basically those mom and pop shops that might have a few dusty cans in the back. I scooped up every bit of pork I could, including bass strips, grubs, lizards, crawfish models, and as much number 11 pork frog as I could find. How bad is my hoarding? Well, let's just say that I've got enough pork to last a while. I still fish with these baits today, but boy, I am careful. Uh, there's nothing I hate worse than losing a jig on the bottom. Not because of the jig, just because of that piece of pork rind that's attached to it. If anybody out there knows of a pork alternative to Uncle Josh, make sure you drop a comment down below and we'll make sure to mention it and get the word out on Retro Bass. We've got three baits left in my top 10 list of discontinued baits that I wish they would reintroduce. And these next three are really fish catchers for me. Starting out with this bait, the vintage Rapala Minnow Spoon. This spoon came out in the 80s and it is essentially a souped up silver minnow. It's actually a quite heavy bait, nearly an ounce and it's got a really awesome fish silhouette and profile. Growing up on the Severn River, I caught a ton of monster pickerel, baby pike for you guys who don't know, with this bait. Far and away, my favorite color for this bait was silver, but for largemouth, I actually use this color quite a bit. A nice fire tiger pattern. Rapala is an interesting company, and they actually have a number of baits that they sell outside the US, but not in the US. Uh, the Otis line that my cousin Josh turned me on to is one of those. While you can't get this bait in the U.S., Rapala actually does sell this bait outside the U.S. to this day. You can pick them up on eBay, and I gotta tell you, I love this bait, but I wish they would sell it right here in Texas. What did Bob Ross say? That we don't make mistakes, but that we have happy accidents. Well, if there was ever a happy accident in the world of fishing, it is this, the original Storm Wigglewort. Wigglewort fanatics know all too well that this bait is definitely one of the happy accidents in fishing. When designed, the molds were actually not the best. They had a lot of joints that were not lined up. If you look at the bait, I'll show you this. You can even see on some of the older baits that it's not very consistent. When Rappel approached the storm, they decided to redo the molds and make them perfect. Well, they did a great job. The problem was that happy accident, those molds that had these misshapen lips, actually led to some of the best hunting crankbaits ever. You can see here, this pre-storm wigglewort has a really crooked lip. Look at that. Once the molds were perfected, a lot of that hunting action went away. Well, I don't think the odds of Rapala 
messing up the molds of the storm wiggle wart are too good. So if you got them, fish them. And if you fish them, don't lose them. Well, it's about that time. So if I had just one lure and all of the lures that have been discontinued that I could reintroduce, it would be this bait. This is a bait from one of my favorite lure designers of all time, Mr. Tom Mann. I said that he had two baits on this list, and he does. This bait that I'm talking about is a Tom Mann design, but it is actually not a man's bait. It was designed under the Fish World banner. For those of you who know, you know this bait all too well. The Tom Mann Pogo Shad. This is one of the most unique lipless crankbaits ever designed and really quite a genius design. On the front end of this bait, it is a standard looking lipless crankbait. In fact, if I hit, hit the tail, that pretty much looks like a rattle spot or a rattle trap. Nothing too crazy. But this tail is where the magic happens. What's awesome about that bait is because of that tail, it will actually hover just over the weeds and you can fish it super shallow. Tom had two sizes of this bait, both the larger version, which is good for about three feet down, and the shallow version, which almost runs like a man's one minus. Fish in the Potomac, which has miles and miles of grass flats, sometimes inches under the surface, this bait was an absolute go-to. The trouble is, of course, it has since been discontinued as all of the fish world baits were. I don't know who has rights to the Tom Man Pogo Shad. I don't know if it's man's, I don't know if it's out in limbo. But if there was ever one bait I could see reintroduced today, it would absolutely be the Tom Man Pogo Shad. You know what? I'm gonna call Bass Pro Shops and try to get me some tornadoes. This call may be recorded or monitored for quality assurance purposes. Welcome to Bass Cabela's. This is Josie. How may I help you? Hey Josie, this is Chris from uh, Retro Bass and how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? Hey, very good. I'm uh, trying to order um, an item off of your master catalog. Uh, it's on page okay. uh, 138. Which master catalog? Uh, it. Which master catalog? It's the Bass Pro Shops master um, it's, it's an older one. It's uh, 1988. A 1988 catalog? Where did you find a catalog? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard to say. Dang. I've got a catalog from 78, if that helps. Oh, gosh. All right, the item number I've got is uh, 283... 968. It's a tornado spinnerbait. Tornado spinnerbait. Okay, that helps. Let's see if we've got a few things. I am not showing anything for a tornado spinnerbait. Um, Blue Fox spinner. <sighs> In nineteen eighty eight you could get enough of these things. Wow. Yeah, I don't have anything like that. Well, thank you. Uh, I guess I'll have to take it up with Johnny personally. <laughs> I, I appreciate that help I'm anyway. Sorry. <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay, have a good one. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye. You too. Bye. Well, we tried. Till next time, fished old school.